Hey there, Scott here. Your video is going to start in about 30 seconds. I just want to give you a little bit of context. The video you're about to watch is part of a series of educational videos. Some of them are taught by me. Some of them are taught by other instructors. The goal here is to bring in experts who have excelled in their niche or their industry over their career and let them teach over to you whatever they specialize in. There's a variety of tools, technologies, walkthroughs, sales, marketing, business, startup, growth concepts and ideas. Hopefully you can learn and the whole goal of all of these videos is to help you level up in your personal or your professional life. Enjoy. Hello and welcome to this new Android development tutorial. In this tutorial we will learn how to integrate ads in our Android application. More specifically, Atomov banner ads. So we open Android Studio as always and we click on start a new Android Studio project. We go to empty activity and click on next. For the name of this app, we will call it um, add mov integration okay we will make sure the selected language is java and the minimum api level is at least 14. we will click on finish and we will wait for the project to be loaded so basically what we will do in this video is to import the google sdk that allows us to show ads on our Android application. Alongside the video, you will find a text explanation, which I will be following myself, and you can use to speed up the process instead of being copying what I what I copy actually, because I will be copying some stuff. I will be copying some stuff for a text file. So, let's see what can we do now. So here we have our text file, which will be, we will be using on this tutorial. As you can see, I have um, wrote down the steps we have to follow. As the first step, we can read here that says add Atmov library. So to add Atmov library, we will copy this line, which starts with implementation and all of this. So we will copy this and we will paste it on our Gradle app that file, build that Gradle in the module app file. So to find that file, you will go to the left under Gradle scripts and the second one. So don't be confused with the project one. You have to select the module app file. So you open the file, you scroll down to the bottom and here you will find the dependencies. Inside this object, we will paste what the line we just copied. As you can see, it is implementation com .google .android .gms col colon play services at slide. In this case, we're using the light version because it has some advantages. The main one being that it's of course light. It adds way less weight to your APK file. And this is the current version. Now we will click on the top bar, this one right here, which is the sync now button. We will click on it and we will wait for the sync to be completed. If you don't find that button, you can also search for this elephant button right here at the top and click on that. After we've done that, we go and keep doing the next steps. So the next step is the app to add the internet permission to their to our manifest. So we will copy this permission, this line right here, which is the internet permission, in which we ask for permission to access the internet. And to do that, we go to our manifest file, which is under the manifests folder. The file is called Android Manifests.xml. And there we copy right here uh, below the package name you know below this and before the application we paste the user's permission line so this is telling the system that we will use the internet to get ads okay so the next step we have to specify the ads metadata in the manifest inside the application tag so we will copy this met metadata object 
and we will paste it inside the application tag. So as you can see, this right here is the application tag, but we have to put it inside like an activity is inside. I mean, at the same hierarchy level as an activity, as you can see right there. I will reformat the code to look, make it look a little bit better. I will add an extra line here in order for you to um, easily see what I just did. This is what I just pasted right here. So this, as you can see, has an Android value element. This value is the default value when you are testing apps. This will show test ads that you won't get revenue from. But when you are publishing your app, only when you are uploading it to the Play Store or any other uh, Android App Store, you have to change this value to the one that will be provided by, by AdMob themselves for you. That is kind of a private value that will be um, associated with your actual AdMob's account. So the revenue from that value will go to your bank account. So this right here, as I told you, is for testing. So for every time that the app is not being used by an end user. Okay, so we, we continue to the tutorial and we go to step four and we have to create an XML object. So here we have a whole linear layout, as you can see. So you will copy all of this and you will go to activity main.xml or whatever your um, layout file is, you will basically copy the whole thing. So you will delete everything and control B to paste um, this new element right here. Okay, if we go to preview, we can see here how the ad will look like. As you can see right there we will be doing some adjustments if we don't like the position later in the video. Okay, so let's continue with the tutorial. The step number five, we have to initialize the ad in Java. Okay, this line right here has to be called only once uh, in the app um, life, I mean. So this means we have to call it, or it's very common to call it on the onCreate method, as you can see right here. Now we have to import um, this library. You can go and do it without enter or just write it import com that google that android that gms that ads that mobile ads, okay? And this uh, code right here, this string is the same we used in the Android manifest, okay? So when you have your own thing, but that is only for production, just when you're going to publish the app, you will put your new one right here and also on the manifest. As you can see, it ends with 13, and this one also ends with 13 because it's the same, okay? Let's continue with the tutorial. Okay, now we have to define our add view object. To do this, we will copy this line, which basically says final add view my add and find view by id r dot id that my add. So we have to import this new library. So we go import and come Google Android. GMS adds and add view. Again, you can do it if you want just pressing Alt Enter. So right here we find the view by ID and the RID of our view is R that ID that my app as you can see. So if you go to activity main XML file, here you find that the app that we are showing in the screen has this ID. That's why we are referring to this exact object. Okay. We go back to the main activity.java file. And now we continue with the tutorial, which actually is kind of the last step we have to do before actually sending it to the device, which is loading the app. So 
we copied that line from the um, text tutorial and we paste this line just after this my add line but here you can see that we have to do some stuff so first of all we have to change this because it's not referring to our ad so the first thing we have to write is our ad name which is called my ad as you can see now we have to import another library which is called the ad request com that google that android that gms that adds at and at request at request okay we import that and we're ready to go actually now so this will be what is basically the needed stuff to do now we click on run app if you have a real device you can run it there or if you have a an emulator you can also run it there I am starting the emulator and while we start we will be explaining a little bit more about what we just did right here okay let's see so we are waiting for the emulator to be loaded as you can see it's loading state Okay, now we check if the emulator is ready, and it is. So now it's waiting for the app to be sent to, to it. So we wait a little bit here. Okay, so we will check if everything is fine. And here we have our AdMob integration. And as you can see, it says test ad, and these we have loaded this time our ad right here, as you can see. Now, what can we do differently? Okay, we can change the position of our ad, or we can add an extra step on our tutorial, which is actually um, an optional step that is about an event listener that will tell us when the app is loaded because remember in order for an ad to be loaded it needs internet access so what happens if a user doesn't have internet so the ad won't be loaded and and when do i know how do i know that so for that we just use an event listener that is called an ad listener so the eighth step so we loaded the ad we run the app we have run the app to test if we did everything fine and it works fine so here remember that when we load the ad we have to use the name of our ad element in this case is my ad okay don't forget this so I, I did it just for you to understand and not just to copy and paste everything but also to understand why we're doing this so this object is referred again right here Okay, so the eighth step is optional but useful. Set an ad listener. Okay, we will copy this code right here and we will go and test if the ad listener works as we expect. Okay. So, as you saw here, the ads are updated. It says, nice job. This is a uh, 468 times 60 text test ad. Okay? So, it's working fine. So, there are different types of ads. There's not just the banner ad. There's also, a, it's inside the banner category, but it's called medium rectangle, which is a size of... Of kind of a square size kind of a rectangle size that will be that won't usually fill the whole device width but the height will be I think four times this one so this is a kind of different 
add size. We will do it um, later to understand how that works. So back on our create method, we will paste the code we just copied, the add listener code, and we also have to import the add listener library. So we go and type import com dot google dot android dot gms that adds that add listener okay so here we cannot we will define this variable as a global one so the line that says private boolean add loaded equals false we will cut and put it outside the onCreate method, right here, okay? This flag, as I call it, this add loaded boolean flag will tell us if the app has been loaded or not. As I told you, and as I told you that maybe the user doesn't have an internet connection at any given time. So what this is doing, so what this is doing is that when the app has been loaded, the flag is set to true. And if for some reason, like an internet failure or some other reason, the ad failed to load, the ad loaded flag is set to false. In this way, we will know what's going on. As a practical way of using it, we will use a button to load the app. So we go to our activity main and here we will create something before the the app object for example we will simulate we have an app right here for example it can be a text view and with much parent height zero dp weight uh, it can maybe one this really doesn't matter this is just an example and as text we will have this is my cool app. And we have we want it to be in the center, so we set gravity to center, and you want it and we wanted a lot more uh, text size, so we will go text size, maybe 30 SP, and we have that. Maybe we want it to have a different text color, so we go text color and we set it to black. So very fast and easy to do. Now, this is just an example to show you that now the app is at the bottom of the screen, okay? And now, additional to this, we will put a button. By the way, the policy of Google for, for ads, that's now you to put a button near the ad or so close to the ad. That's why we will put it before the this is my cool app text view. So the button will be with will be much parent height will be 50 dp and as text you will say load app okay load app so we can have another text view like this one before the button so this is just to emulate uh, simulate maybe a, an app design right here Okay, no more than that. And here we have to add the button an ID. The ID will be um, load add button. Okay, as simple as that. Now, we have a button, we have a kind of design, simple design simulation on our app. We go back, oh, we can put in a space right here, and we go back to our main activity, that Java file. And right here, just after the listener, we will set the button. So we will type final button. We will import button. Import com that um, widget is Android dot widget. Is it widget? Android. It's not com. Sorry, <laughs> it's just Android. So import Android dot widget dot uh, button. Oh, it's capital V, I think. Okay, so button. 
now that we have our button import, we will say final button load add button. And we will set these elements to find view by id r.id.load add button. Okay, now we will add a, a click listener for this button. So we will know when this button is clicked and the action we wanted to perform when it's clicked. So to do that, we go and say load add button that set on click listener. And inside here we say new on click listener. And the IDE auto generates this useful code for us. Inside the on click method is the action that will take place when we press the button. So we will move this code of load that. So we cut this line and paste it when the button is pressed. Okay, just like that. So the ad will be loaded only when we click the button. Now, as you may remember, we have set an ad listener that we will change or we will do experiments depending if the ad is loaded or not. So when in order for you to figure out or kind of understand better this, we will go to our activity main and XML. And when it says, this is my cool app, we will add an ID to this text view field. We will go and say, um, text view one. Okay. Just to give it a name. Okay, so here, before we set the add listener, we go and create a text view object. So we say final text view. Uh, we import it. Sometimes it automatically imports it. And here we go and say my text view, just to give it a name. And we remember the, the name we gave it on the XML file was, so we go find view by id r.id text view one okay so when the ad is loaded apart from setting the flag we will set text to my text view so we'll go and say my text view set text the ad was loaded okay and when it fails to load we go and say my text view that set text the ad failed to load okay as simple as that in this way we will know when the ad is loaded or not so right now i'm gonna run this app again and we will see what happens so it's being compiled by the ide and when it's ready it will show it will be shown in this screen right here so on our emulator so it says this is my cool app and the ad is still not loaded because we haven't pressed the load add button we go ahead and press load add and here we have the ad was loaded and we have actually the out the ad loaded so what happens now if we go and disable the internet connection right here? So we disable it and we press load ad again. So we will do it. And it says the ad failed to load because there's no internet. However, the previous ad is still shown because it was saved into memory. But if we launch the app without internet, it won't be shown at all. So we will test that again. So I am launching the app again. I am sending it again. And this time the app from the beginning doesn't have internet. And I will press the load ad button and right this thread it says the ad failed to load. As you can see, there's no ad whatsoever. So this was how to set up banner ads. This is a very, very interesting tutorial to learn. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you learned it and I see you in the next one. Bye. Hello and welcome to this new 
Android development tutorial. In this tutorial, we will learn how to integrate AdMob interstitial ads. In the previous tutorial, we learned how to integrate the banner ads. As you can see right here, this was the banner ad we integrated the last time we were um, learning about AdMob integration. Um, interstitial ads are ads that cover the full screen of your device, the ones that cover the entire screen and you have to close it with a, um, a close button on one of the corners of the screen. So the first thing we will do to integrate these AdMob interstitial ads is to follow this tutorial. If you follow the previous tutorial, it, this will be a lot easier. So the first step is to add the AdMob library. So as the previous tutorial, we copied this line into our Gradle file. So we copy and we go to Gradle scripts, build that Gradle, the module app file, we open it and we paste it. Remember, if you have already done it, you don't have to do it again. So that's why this tutorial will be a little bit faster than the previous one. Okay, so we continue. This is the line we paste, just for those who didn't um, know. The last line, this is the line we paste. These instructions you will find available in the text section of the video. Okay, so we continue and we add the internet permission to the manifest. We also did this yesterday um, when we were learning about the AdMob banner ads tutorial. So we copy this line, we go to the manifest folder on the manifest file and we paste this line, uses permission, Android permission, internet, okay? The next thing we have to do that we also did yesterday is specify ads metadata in the manifest inside the application tag. So we copy this uh, metadata object, okay? And we paste it just right here, as you can see. Okay, so pretty easy so far. Now we have to initialize ads in Java. We copy this line right here and we go to main activity.java inside the onCreate method, we paste this line right here. As you can see, we have paste these and we have also created a banner ad for the previous tutorial, okay? Now, what's new in this tutorial is these interstitial ad object. So we have to define a new interstitial ad object. For these, we will copy these two lines in which we define and set the add unit ID. So go to after everything we did in the previous tutorial, after this button to load an add, and here we will paste this, these two lines. So now we have to import this interstitial add library. So we can do it with alt enter, or we can just type import, oops, I'm Caps on, okay, so import com.google.android.gms.ads and here we have to type interstitial ad, okay? Once we've done it, please take account that this code, uh, this key right here, this is string, is a new one. So for interstitial ads, we have this new string right here, okay? Okay, okay, now let's continue with the tutorial. As you can see, we have to load the ad. But interstitial ad works a little bit different than banner ad. In banner ad, you just, I mean, load the ad and that's it but here on interstitial ads we have to load it and then we have to show it so we have to do two actions so to load it 
we have this line right here we just pasted and to show it we have to maybe create a button okay so before everything I mean at the top we will go and create a button with match parent height 50 dp um, text it will say load in stir interstitial add okay and we will give an add id of load interstitial add okay so far so good now we go to marine activity java and after these lines right here we type final button load in interstitial add and we assign it to find view but id r that id that load interstitial add okay now we go and say load interstitial add set on click listener and we type new on click listener and the ide auto generates this code for us when the on click metal is called we will perform the action of loading so we go back to the tutorial and as you can say right here we have this which is calling to load the app we have already did it then we set the click listener right here and we have to check if the ad is loaded in order for us to show it so we copy these lines I'm highlighting here because we've already done the previous lines okay and inside the onclick method we do this okay instead of of logging we will do something different here for us to make it easier to understand so we will delete this line and we will say my text view which is the text view we created in the previous tutorial in case you don't know how to create it we just create a text view field like right here and we add an ID one um, even better we can do this again here so we go to our text view it can be whatever text view you like and we set it to an ID we will call it my text view 2 for example so we go before setting the click listener we will define that element as final text view my text view 2 and we say this is find view by IP r dot id dot my text view two okay so here we set my text view two and we will say set text between double quotes we will say interstitial add is not loaded okay If we go to the tutorial, we can see that now we can actually run the application. So we go to run. Okay, we go to run and run app. You can do it in a virtual device or in a real device. Okay. So this is the tutorial we did yesterday, the current one. But now we're 
have a slightly different tutorial in which, as we remember, we create interstitial add, we set the add unit IP, we load the add, and when we click on the button that says load interstitial add, it will actually show the interstitial add. So here we can change, should change this load to show. Okay, if we press here, we have an interstitial add showing. Okay, just for, in order for this to make more sense, we will go to the first one and change the word load with show. Okay, we will run the app again. Okay, and now we have the show interstitial add button. If we press it, the interstitial add will be shown. So this is an ad that covers the full screen. And you can close it with this close button on the top left in this case. So we press and the ad is closed. Now, same as yesterday, we will go and disable internet access to test if what we did works. So we disable internet access right there and we will run the app again. Okay. And now we will press and show interstitial add. And as you can see, it says interstitial add is not loaded because we don't have internet access. But not only that, maybe the interstitial lot is not loaded because it's actually being loaded. It's actually being downloaded from the internet. So how do we know when it's ready to be shown? We will, if we want to show the ad just after it completes its loading stage. So to do that, we go to the tutorial and we go to the last step, which says optional but useful. Set at listener, okay? And we copy all of these, okay? We go to our Android Studio main activity that Java file. And after everything, right here, still inside on create method, we paste what we just copied. And here inside the set inter set at listener, we have um, a couple of methods which tell us the current state of the app. So this is when the app is loaded, this method is called. When the app failed to load, this other method is called. If the app is opened, this is called. Okay. So what we will do is that we will show the ad when it's loaded. So inside on add loaded method, we will say my interstitial ad that show. This means please show the ad when it is ready to be shown. So it ended loaded, loading, okay? So we will test this right now. So we run the app and wait for it. So we want to do anything right now. The app is there. Okay. But nothing happens. Why nothing happens? Because we don't have internet enabled. So if we enable the internet right now and we run the app again, we will wait and do nothing again. And we can see that the out ad is shown automatically just when it's loaded. Okay, pretty useful. And now what happens if we want to know when the ad is not loaded? Okay, so here we will say to text to set the text view to when the ad fails to load either because it's not internet or some other reason. Okay. 
So first we will go and and turn off the internet access. Okay. Now we will send the new app with this new line of code that says please tell me when it fails to load. So we run this and of course now it will fail to load. Okay, it's running. And here you can see inst interstitial app, it's not loaded. So you can have more options right here, like when the ad is opened on when the ad left the application, the user left the application and when the ad is closed. So if you need those extra functionality, you can use it. But the main two ones are this one that I teach you. Okay, so this was the tutorial on how to create Interstitial Lab. I hope you enjoy it. And I see you in the next one. Bye. Hello, and welcome to this new Android development tutorial. In this tutorial, we will learn how to integrate AdMob ads into our Android application. We will integrate Android rewarded video ads, which are full screen videos that when users watch it completely, you give them a reward. Okay, like maybe an extra life in a game or whatever the case it may be. If you have followed the previous tutorial, you may notice that I've cleaned a bit these in order for us to not be confused with the previous stuff. So we start with the tutorial right now. We add the AdMob library. If we if you did this, you can ignore this step. So we copy this and we go to our Gradle scripts and build the Gradle file, the second one, the module app one, and we paste the line right here on the dependencies object, as you can see. The next step is copying this internet permission, which will be used to get ads. So we copy this and we go to our manifest file and we paste it right here, as you can see. The next step is to specify the application metadata that will um, enable us to get ads from the AdMob server. Okay, and we paste these right here okay the next step is to initialize the ads in the java file so we copy that line and go to main activity that java inside our on create method and we paste this here so all of that we've done in the previous tutorials now we have new steps right here right now the first one is to implement the rewarded video ad listener in order for us to know rewarded video ad events that may occur. We go to our public class main activity extends app compat activity line and before the opening um, bracket we type implement rewarded video ad listener as you can see. Now you can check that this warning right here tells us to implement method. You can either tap there and implement the method and press OK. And if you weren't able to do that, you can just copy the method from the text tutorial right here. As you can see, all of these methods is exactly the same thing. You copy this and you paste them outside the on-create method, okay? Okay, let's continue. With the sixth step, we create a rewarded video ad object and initialize it, okay? We copy these two lines right here and we will paste them after our initialization of the mobile ads line. Now you can see that the object is not created. We need to create a global variable in order for us to access our uh, reward video ad, um, object from outside the onCreate method. So we go and say private 
rewarded video rewarded video add oh just add okay and we will name it m rewarded video add okay now the warnings disappeared and we have set the instance of the reward video add to this applic to this activity and we also set reward video add listener to this activity because we're implementing the reward video add listener okay so let's continue and we now have to load the add so we will do also in the onCreate method for that we copy this line and we paste this below Okay, we import the add request library by tapping alt enter or just typing import com that google that android that gms adds um, add request. Okay, now we are loading the ad, so we're basically t um, telling the server that we want an ad, so please send us one. Okay, so we can create now a button event to show the ad if we want. Or if you just want to show it when it's ready, we can also do that. To do that, we go and say inside this first method, which is the unrewarded video ad loaded, which means the ad is ready to be shown because it's already loaded we will say m rewarded video add that show okay so far so good and we will also since it is a rewarded video add we want to know if the user um, deserves the reward for that we use this method that says public but unrewarded okay here we will know when the user watched the video completely so we can give him or her an extra life or whatever the case may be to do that we will create a text view which we have already here from the previous tutorials if you don't have this so please create one like this right here and add this ID to it. We are calling it text view one. Okay. Now we go to main activity that Java, and we will create a global text view. For that, we type private text view, and we will name it my text view. Okay. And after this line on the onCreate method, we will initialize this text view field. For that, we type my text view equals find view by id r dot id dot text view one, which was the name we gave gave it on our uh, XML file. Okay, and we are uh, doing that just to know if we have a kind of a, a sign for us in order to know if the user deserves or not the reward. So when this method is called, this it means that the user actually deserves the reward. For that, I will say my text view, set text, uh, we can say something, congrats, or something like that. You won a reward, okay? Whatever the case may be. We hope everything is fine and we will run the app on our device. So we're waiting it for be to be loaded. And as you can say, this is my cool app and we wait. So always make sure you have internet access. Maybe we don't have it right now. So it's enabled right now, so always make sure you have internet access and run the app. And now 
we will wait for the uh, complete ad to be shown as you can see here you have the test ad that's shown and when you watch it completely as in this case we did we can close this right here and when we close it it says congrats you won a reward now let's run it again but this time we won't let it finish okay so we will close it and when we type close it says close video you will lose your reward and we will say yeah close and in this case it doesn't say that I have won the reward because I didn't watch the complete video so this is very very simple I hope you enjoy it and I see you in the next one bye